Hello everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I am here today with an in-depth video on how I menu plan. Now this video is going to entail a lot of stuff, so it's going to be long. It's going to include how I menu plan, where I find dinner inspiration at, where I find coupons at, what I take to the store with me, um, and all of it in one video because I wanted it to correspond with the Thanksgiving prep videos I already have up and correspond with the future Christmas prep videos that will be up in December because I know we're all entertaining a lot of people, um, a lot of us anyway, over the holidays and I really want you guys to be able to save money and I'm going to show you some of the tricks I have and what my budget is and all that good stuff and we will um, jump right into it. So grab that cup of coffee, continue watching if you want to see how I mini plan. So I was watching on the news the other day that more families right now in the United States are on food assistance. And I've been on food assistance before. I know how hard it is to stretch a dollar or whatever the government says you are allotted through that month and make sure you have enough food. If you're not careful, you will run out of money and you won't have enough meals to get you through. And, you know, for us, our grocery budget is somewhere close to $1,000 a month. Now, don't flip out because I want to really explain how this works for us. So, on a weekly basis, I spend anywhere to 150 to 175 a week on groceries. That is just food. It doesn't include anything else, household items. And then every two weeks, I spend approximately $200 on household items um, such as laundry soap, paper towels, paper cups, cat food, dog food. Now, please understand that we are um, a cattery. I breed Persian cats. I'm on my last litter. I'm shutting the cattery down. But our food allowance for the animals is almost as high as it is for us. So it will drop down once we, you know, finalize closing the cattery down after I get rid of these last few kittens. But, you know, I know that it's hard to save money at the grocery store. I know that prices keep going up in that store, in every store, and, you know, you have to stretch your buck the best you can. And in order to really do that for our family, because believe it or not, 150 to 175 in groceries is not a ton. Now, I say a family of four because we always have leftovers. And I like that because I, I stay at home wife and mom. I eat a lot of leftovers right out of that fridge every day for lunch. So when I say 150 to 175 just in food for a family of four, you know, um, it, it is for us even though we're a family of three because we do eat the leftovers. You guys have seen that in my vlogs by now. You know that I don't mind leftovers at all. So I think the first thing to point out is you need to be dedicated and I really think that you should start Saturday night to Sunday morning on planning your meals. Now you can think throughout the week and come up with some inspiration. I use all kinds of things to come up with inspiration. I use cooking magazines, um, I use any magazines, Rachel Ray, Savior, all those magazines I find dinner ideas in. I also find dinner ideas in my cookbooks which I have a ton on that shelf right there and I come up with recipes that I want to try. I also look at past um, menu plans to get some inspiration too. So you can use whatever you want. You can use Word, you can use your journal, you can use a piece of paper, you can use a whiteboard on the wall in the kitchen. It doesn't really matter where you plan your meals. It's whatever works for you. So I usually plan all of my meals in my planner. Everybody has seen um, all my different planners. I have a ton, but the one thing, well, one of the many things that stay consistent is my menu planning because I really think it's important to put this in this area so I remember. Now, down here in this planner, there's an area for it. I always put my menu plan in pencil because if we happen to go out on the night that I plan to dinner, I erase it from the menu plan and add it to the following week, or I don't, and I just know I have an extra meal in my freezer. Works out great. But the thing is, is to always sit down, and I like to do this on Saturday night, because a lot of the circulars start to come out, and I will explain more about that on, on this video in just a second. But I like to start, and I just put Monday through Friday, for us in our family, 
I really only need to plan the meals, the dinners. Um, I don't need to plan breakfast. Breakfast is something that we always have like two or three breakfast meals on hand at any given time in our home, such as pancake mix, eggs, bacon, um, bread for French toast. We always have certain items on hand for breakfast, but we don't eat a lot of breakfast around here except maybe on the weekends. Um, Jackson very seldom eats breakfast in the morning before school. I know that's not good, but he seldom eats. I don't eat breakfast a ton and we always have oatmeal, um, but I don't really have to plan for breakfast. I don't really plan for lunch either because I can dig around in the kitchen and always find something. I do plan school lunches for Jackson. That's real simple, but I do plan for those. And um, I plan mainly dinner and snacks. That's just really what I do. Um, and there's lots of ways you can plan your menus. You can do something such as Monday beef, Tuesday chicken, Wednesday um, soup and salad type of night. You can do Thursday pasta. You can do Friday international night where you do Mexican or Chinese or Japanese or Greek or a Mediterranean meal. Whatever you want, you can do a kind of a theme night and then maybe a Sunday a family night. I kind of just go off of um, what we're feeling, what we're really wanting. Um, and sometimes it's really hard, you guys, to come up with different healthy menus every night for my family. But we manage. And when I say family night on Sundays, that would be like a meatloaf or some big pasta dinner or some roast. Um, I like to switch it up quite a bit. And, you know, actually before I look for recipes, I also watch talk shows. And I know it's funny because Rachel Ray's talk show is one of the best shows and her website is one of the best if you're looking for menu inspiration. I have found so many meals on TV from Rachel Ray to the Pioneer to Jada De Laurentiis um, to, the, to the Today Show when they do a morning clip of, you know, some type of cooking um, or some type of meal. So you can find inspiration for menu planning in so many places. You can also Google menu planning and there are a bazillion websites that will help you come up with inspiration on what to make for your family, either for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snacks. So, let's get into saving money. You know how I menu plan, it's simple. I take my notebook, Monday through Friday, I write it down in the notes for this week, and I plan my meals out. I also used to put it on the whiteboard in the kitchen, but I got tired of doing that, and I just don't do it no more. But, again, I start prepping my grocery list and my menu planning on Saturday night because a lot of circulars become live on the internet at that time. So, my local grocery store circular or the Walmart um, circular or whatever Kroger's or whatever store comes usually live at night on Saturday. So, you know, I decide... A lot of my meals, I guess you would say, on the meat sales at my local grocery store. So, I've been doing this for a while, and I'm going to tell you all that, hands down, Walmart is the cheapest in terms of everything but meat. And I do buy a lot of great value stuff. I do um, try to shop at Walmart once or twice a month to save money. But for meats, I find my grocery store, my local Ingalls, or um, maybe for you guys, your local Kroger's or wherever is generally cheaper on meat than Walmart. It's just always the case. Walmart is the cheapest hand down when it comes to shelf items. It really is. Um, and I know a lot of you don't like that, but it's honestly the truth. But you can still find great deals in your grocery store, um, which is maybe not Walmart, um, on different items too that are on the shelves. So, I always recommend, no matter what, getting a Sunday paper because you're going to save money with the coupons in this paper. On Sundays, I always do, well, I've started back. I don't want to say always. I did for a long time, and I've started back doing it, post a preview on what coupons will most likely be in your paper. I can't guarantee it on everybody. Each region is different. But you will find these book it, blah, 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 these little books of um, coupons. Now, these are great because generally they are geared towards the holidays. 
So you're going to find a lot of different things such as stocks and um, holiday items that you're going to use for baking and for your home in papers. Um, there's no coupons in a Sunday paper that is on like a holiday weekend, but you can always find your Sunday paper for about $2. And if you see the coupons that, that are on my coupon preview on Sunday nights or Saturday nights or Sunday mornings, excuse me, um, you might want to buy two if you see coupons that you're really going to use a lot during that period of time. Now, what I do is I make my, my menu out and then I start my grocery list. So I always write my grocery list on my menu. I think it's important to have that full menu when you go to the store with you. And then on the other side of the menu on the grocery list, and unfortunately I didn't grab one of those. So I don't have a grocery list here with me, unfortunately. I can't believe I don't. Whenever you need one, you can't find one. And I don't usually save my past grocery list. I don't need those a whole lot. But I'm going to use this piece of paper just to kind of roadmap how I do it. I always put the meals that I'm having at the bottom. Because I think it's important to always see what you're buying for. And I don't do my household items on this list unless I absolutely have to buy them during this time. I usually do two shopping trips. One for groceries and one for household. Groceries is generally every week and household is generally every two weeks. So on my grocery list, I would start with meats. And I would just list what meats I would need. And then I would list any corresponding shell items that are going to go with the meal planning. So if I need macaroni and cheese for one night for dinner, that would go right below it. Anything that corresponds with dinner items. Below that, I would add snacks, produce, dairy, whatever else I need around the house. But I always shop and do my grocery list according to my menu plan. So let's just say, for instance, let me get my book. Where did I just put that? Um, say, for instance, um, hold on one second. Say, for instance, um, Monday is pork chops, Tuesday or Wednesday is tacos, and Thursday is pasta. So I'm going to list at the top that I'm going to need pork chops out of the meat department. I'm also going to list that I'm going to need hamburger or ground chuck for tacos and whatever kind of meat I'm going to want for my pasta. And then below that, in a grouping setting, I'm going to add the pasta that I need, the taco kit if I'm using a taco kit, um the corn or whatever shelf items I'm going to need for those meals. I don't write out my grocery list according to aisles. Everybody else I know does, but for me, this, this works great. I know how my grocery is set up. I know that when I'm in the, the canned vegetable area, I can check off every canned vegetable that I've listed. And then I go on to list the dairy and the snacks and all the other items I'm going to need. Just kind of around on the grocery list. There's no rhyme or reason on how you make a list. But I do find it important to list all the menu items that you're going to be fixing so you don't, you know, forget something that's important. And then for Jackson's lunches, I just make a little area, write down some items that I know that he's going to want or that he's requested, and I take my list and I move on. And then I move on into my computer and into the coupons too. So once my list is completed, I'll start going through the coupons that I currently have. And those coupons can be from newspapers. They can be from uh, older newspapers that I still have coupons that I want to use up. They can be from coupons that have came in the mail with a sample item. Be sure to... You know, always check those freebies that come in the mail, especially if you follow this blog of mine at kjaggers.com and you know that I'm listing freebies every day. And when you get those freebies in, if it's something you're going to buy, there's usually coupons. You can grab those coupons too. There's also the Peely coupons that you can find at the grocery store on items. Don't forget those, but we'll talk about those more in a minute. So I then turn my attention to the computer to hunt for coupons. And I'm going to show you some sites that I use right now so um, you can save money too. Let's look at them. So as I was saying, you can check your, your local grocery store flyers right here on the computer, which I love. 
So you can see this week, Tyson chicken um, breast are a they're the dollar in split in breast for a dollar twenty eight a pound. You also see that the oranges are six nine or um, the clementines for a big box are six ninety eight each. You can see what sales they're going to have for that week, usually on Saturday night. You can also sign up to receive these by email, so I suggest doing that. And um, another thing that I recommend is following your grocery store on Facebook because you're going to find more deals, you're going to find more things that are going on, more sales by following the stores that you shop at on Facebook and Twitter. So keep that in mind too because it's very, very important. So one of the places that I always look for coupons is coupons.com. I'll put these links of whatever websites I am talking about below. But on this website, you can find so many coupons to print. I mean, it's crazy. So save a dollar on two Big G cereals. You pair that with a sale and you're going to get one hell of a deal. So all you would do is click your coupon, come over here to the red little box and click print coupons. Now, if you have trouble with printing your coupons, I will really believe because, you know, everybody needs to save money nowadays at the grocery store. I think that if you took the time to plan and if that included a trip to your local library to print coupons on Sunday afternoon, I, I think it's totally worth it. If I run out of printer ink, which does happen, I go ahead and have my husband print out the coupons. Here's save up to four sixty five on Tide to Go and Pods. You have to watch a little video, but here's the video. It's clipped. See? And I I love coupons.com. I use them all of the time. Another thing that I do on my blog, let me get to it, just to show you, is every night, right now until after the holidays, I am doing a nightly coupon roundup, which shows you some of my favorite printable coupons. And... I think these are super important because all of us can save some money at the grocery store. I've even listed Walmart's Black Sale, Black Friday deals. I won't be shopping the Black Friday, but I know many of you will. I wanted to list it for you. So I, I look all over for coupons. Another thing I will do, say I want some Kraft cheese, and I know what I need cheese. So I'll do Kraft cheese coupons, Google it. And start hunting for coupons. Now this does take a while, especially if you got a big list, but it's so worth it because you're going to save money. And if you find what you need, which might be on sale, and then you find a corresponding coupon, you're really, really going to save. Now I have talked about all of this before in a different video for couponing, which I will also link below because it has more great tips. But... Some of the apps that are very handy in helping you save money with your smartphones are, let me just get on up here, ShopSmart. Now the ShopSmart app, let's see if I can find it. Let me just put app, there's so many things. There we go. The ShopSmart app um, is really good for making your list. It's, um, I don't have this installed on my phone. I used to. But this is great to make a list. It creates a master list where you only do things one time. The description says, ShopSmart provides shoppers with fast access to common questions you need to know when making a purchase. You can also store photos of receipts in case you lost them, as well as set reminders for um, gift voucher expiration and stuff like that has a good review on it. A lot of people use it. Another one that um, a lot of people like is the Grocery IQ app. There we go. And this app, whoops, that's just a review on it. Um, the Grocery IQ is really handy um, because Last minute coupons um, come up with this one. Let me explain. The grocery shopping is made quick and easy with the features that you expect from the number one grocery store list app. This builds lists from the extensive product database using text, barcode, and word voice search. Sync and share this list with other devices. Um, and it has had a lot of reviews that are really good. So definitely check out this one. Another one is Saving Star. 
which, um, let me see, Saving Star app, is this it? Yes. Um, this one takes your loyalty cards and gives you more um, coupons. So it says, to save money on your groceries, the Saving Star offers 100% digital grocery coupons that are redeemable over 24,000 supermarkets, drugstores nationwide from brands you love. It's easy. You, um, you tap and select the coupons you like, link them to your loyalty card, and then when you use your loyalty card, those coupons will be added when you scan it. What a wonderful app. I do, in fact, use this one. I love it. Cellfire is another one that a lot of people like. Um, and I think all of these are available um, online or on Android and Apple. Um, come on. So... You can see that it's already pulled up my location um, in Spartanburg. But you can find more coupons. You can add them. And um, this is another great grocery app. There are so many out there. All you have to do is Google grocery apps. And you'll come up with a bazillion. But Cellfire is one of the best ones. And the description here is... Um, Cellfire brings you coupons from your favorite brands, allowing you to save money on every trip to the grocery store. You can easily access across multiple um, grocers and brands. No clipping, no printing, no forgetting. So, love that. And another one that I like, I personally like, is the Red Laser. Um, and Red Laser will, it's really easy. All you do is use the barcode scanner and it will list where you can find that item for cheap. Now, I don't generally do this with grocery store items unless it's a specialty item, but what I do do is do this for, say, Christmas presents or any kind of item that I want, and I want to see where else around town has that item and what their prices are. So I love, love, love that. Now, a lot of people can go ahead and make their um, grocery list right in Word and make a master copy. I don't really find I need to do that, but that's also an option. You could go right down, use any kind of Word program or note program on your computer. And um, these are just my Thanksgiving stuff, but you can see that, you know, in Word, you can use anything to um, make a grocery list. There's all kinds of them, um, even in templates that you can go ahead and use. I don't really use that. I find that a good old pen and paper works perfect. Um, let me move on. Okay, so when I am grocery planning, a lot of my budget goes towards meat. We are meat eaters, but one idea is to have one meat-free night. That's another idea that sometimes I incorporate, which my family does not really like, because even when we have, like, potato soup, they want bacon on top of it. But I really think that if you plan your meals and gather your coupons, which is very important. I will link that coupon video below but because there's so much more that I'm not going to be adding to this video. But when I leave to go to the grocery store, what I take is my list, of course, and I have came back to get it. I don't usually go shopping without a list because it keeps me on track. You guys know I love my list anyway. And I take whatever coupons with me that I need. And I also gear my phone up with the apps and go over those. I also take my reusable shopping bags. Now, I don't always take these because if I'm going to be buying a lot, I think I only have like six. It's just not enough. But I will be buying more, so, you know, I hope save the earth. But we use those um, plastic bags and the paper ones. And, uh, you know, I don't just dedicate time to menu plan because I don't have anything else to do. Even with my budget, which I know some of you guys are going to be like, what? 175 for a family of four is a lot. Not really. Um, and I have really worked hard on condensing it, on keeping things together where, you know, I, another thing that I always do before I start to make my grocery list, which I forgot to mention, I'm so sorry. I will make the, the menu plan right here in the book, as I said. And before I start the, the, 
grocery list, I will always, always check out my refrigerator and my pantry um, and even my spice cabinet to make sure I don't have, that I'm not rebuying stuff. So that's something that you always should do. Take time, go through your cabinets, go through your refrigerator and figure out what you have on time, on hand. A well-stocked pantry is going to save you money. It's going to save you time. You should already have your staples such as bread, flour, um, Pasta is a staple in my house. Um, there's plenty of staples, and you guys know what staples are. They're the things that, you know, you always need, such as cornmeal and oh, oatmeal. I have all kinds of staples, but I always check out my pantry first, so I don't rebuy stuff that I don't need. And, you know, at the end of the day, when I come home from the grocery store, a lot of times I do look over that receipt. I make sure those coupons were added um, and sometimes at the checkout, it's a pain in the ass. Who's going to lie? You got coupons. And what I normally do at the grocery store is while I'm putting stuff up on the conveyor belt, I'll lay the coupon right on top of it. And it does cause a little bit more of a delay. But I'm not too worried about those people behind me because I'm not saving money on their grocery bill. I'm saving money on my own. So, you know, another good tip to do is go in the evening when it's less crowded, when you are going to be using coupons. So if you hold up the line, you're not going to have a whole bunch of people that's angry with you who's trying to get through the rush hour times in the grocery store, which generally I notice between 4.30 and 6.30. Um... I really think it's important to meal plan. I've done it for years. The days that I go into the grocery store without planning are the days that I overspend, I don't get everything I need, and I just walk around like I'm in a daze not knowing what I really need, and that is awful. Um, the budget for the household, again, is all the stuff for the house and the animals, and we have seven cats and a big dog so and fish so you know our budget is different than maybe somebody with no pets if we had no pets i bet we could do 200 for the whole month but with the pets comes you know pet responsibility and that means feeding them and making sure they have what they need which for cats is not just food it's litter and hairball stuff and you know kitty cat stuff same for the dog. He has his own, you know, treats and stuff. And we always find coupons for those, too. My husband is a couponer. He takes coupons left and right through the store to save money. Um, I hate to say it, but we smoke. And you guys know that by now. You know I'm a smoker. I'm trying to quit. I'm getting there. But we use coupons for cigarettes, too. So we use our coupons because um, they work. And they really will cut your budget down. But... You know, I do know a lot of people don't want to take the time and they think it's too overwhelming to cut coupons. It's really not. Now, I don't cut these no more, these booklets. I stack them up. I don't cut the coupons out anymore unless I know I'm going to be using that coupon in an upcoming grocery haul. Um, and, you know, one other question I want to answer right now is why don't I post grocery hauls? I was posting so many of them that I thought that it was starting to be snobbish. Um, I will try to get back to posting maybe one grocery haul a week and trying to explain a little bit more of how I saved money. What I normally do is um, the first week of the month, I will shop at my local Ingalls. That's my local grocery store. I buy the meat items that I need. I will also um, pick out what I need um, out of their sale items. So lastly, some of my number one tips. Make the effort. Make time to sit down, plan your groceries, plan your meals, plan everything out. Make that effort. Make the time because it's going to save you money. It's so worth it not to be stressed out on a weeknight when you're trying to get homework done and get baths and get kids in bed, you know, and you're trying to hunt in the refrigerator for something to make. No, don't do that. Plan your meals. Pick a planning schedule that works best for you. For me, it's late Saturday night into Sunday, and then usually shopping sometimes on Sunday, sometimes on Monday. It just really depends on what I'm doing on Monday. A lot of times Monday I have filming to do, so I like to shop either Sunday, Monday, sometimes Tuesday. Do what works best for you. If your only shopping day is Saturday or Sunday, then plan according to that. Make a list. 
if you go in half cocked in the grocery store you're going to buy a lot of shit you don't need and you're not going to save money because if you don't have that list you're not going to be able to figure out what coupons you need you're just going to be a mess you're going to be a walking around confused mess and i've done it plenty of times so i know what i'm talking about with that shop on a day that works for you just as i said shop on whatever day you know you can find cook the perishable items first the most perishable if you know you're going to have a big salad during the week plan that big salad more towards the beginning of the week so the stuff that you buy in the produce you use right up right away another tip is to prep the produce in the kitchen the day you get it home from the grocery store Sometimes you need to repackage that produce because the packaging sucks or you just used one of those little bags, you know, in the produce area. You want to, like, take your herbs, wrap them in a wet paper towel, take your food items, and really package them well. Another thing to point out is those that 150 to 175 in the food budget a lot of times i will buy a big package of hamburger break that package down and i'm spending maybe three or four dollars on a meal um because i've sorted the meat i broke it down a big package so i've saved money that way i've saved money getting the rest of the items with coupons and my price per meal is only going to be three or four dollars a person and you can't even get that at mcdonald's hardly anymore i know my value meal at mcdonald's is like eight dollars it's ridiculous so it's not just the budget for the food it's the budget per meal and that's not necessarily easy to figure out my sister-in-law and i were really talking about price per meal price per person and yes it's important to figure out those price marks but again work with a budget that works well with your family don't overspend if you overspend it's only going to hurt you later in the month so be very careful and you can plan in snacks you guys i'm not saying don't plan in a package of oreos just look on the computer for a coupon you know um to go with it and you can't always find coupons that's okay too but do the best and another store that i know puts out really good coupons is target now unfortunately i don't live anywhere near a target i haven't lived near a target in like 10 years which sucks i'm really not going to drive 30 or 40 minutes to go to target i just not doing it but target puts out some wonderful coupons and i know my girlfriends and i have talked many times about them getting their list together and they'll go on target's website and look for a coupon to go with everything on their list and more times than not they found them so keep that in mind too also keep in mind that when you're shopping sales that is when you're going to find the best deal so i just showed you that flyer if you find on that flyer something that you want and you find a coupon that will go with it you're really going to save money. So, you know, for a lot of people, I think it's easier if you plan according to the flyers, the sale flyers, which I do because a lot of times I plan my meats and my main items in my meals based off what's on sale. So, you know, you really want to shop the sales, add coupons in when you can, take a list, be dedicated to sticking to that list, and you know shop the stores that are going to give you the best rewards the best savings unfortunately walmart is going to give you the best savings overall on just um shelf items my grocery store gives me better savings on meat items and aldi which is another grocery store can give you tremendous savings in fresh fruit um that i know of because i bought tons of fresh fruit from aldi's but in order to save money on fresh fruit and stuff like that the easiest way is to buy local always buy the local there are programs which i will link below this video is going to have a ton of links below but there are harvest programs that start up in the spring where you can get on a plan and you can pick up or have delivered like a farmer's basket to you we, scott and i did that for a couple years which was fabulous we loved it and um also grow your own fruit and vegetables if you want to help save money on your family's you know grocery bill there are so many tips to share with you guys i don't even think i can compile them all in this video i'll call this video part one and maybe in six to eight months i'll do part two but i do have a coupon video where i show how to pair those sale items with coupon items i think i did it with makeup in that video i'm not sure because it's been a while but i will explain all of that in that video for you guys but you know, I really, really want you guys to save money over the holidays. I hope this video has helped inspire you to make a list, stick to it, look for coupons, 
compare or add those with sale items, shop sales, find stores that work with you that give you the best savings, and save money on your bill. Um, that is pretty much my tips right now, and I will get back to you soon with other videos that correspond with saving money because I know it's such a big deal for so many of us. We're not a rich family, you guys. My husband makes really good money, but we have a lot of kids, a lot of expenses, and we have one income besides what I make on YouTube, the blog, and the kitty cats. And you guys know I'm going to stop doing the kitty cats or our income will lower even more. So for us, it's very important to save money at the grocery store. And I hope this video has inspired you. I will be back very soon. And um, I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching. Oh, and leave any comments, any thoughts you have on menu planning, on saving, on shopping, on any of the them in the comments below, either on my blog at kjackers.com, or you can leave them on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And I love hearing from you, so definitely leave me those comments. And I will talk to you guys soon. Sorry if this video was long. Bye-bye.